set the BPM to 190. This sound calls for mega punchy drums. So I use a plugin called Get Good Drums and the In Your Face preset. Now you don't need a plugin like this, but it does make things easier. If you have access to snappy acoustic drums, you can just literally load them into drum rack and do the same thing. Now it all depends on the samples you find, but you know, there are workarounds. I like Get Good because it sounds more realistic and it does some magic with the samples to not make them sound like the same hit every time. And while an old man might yell at the clouds and make a clickbait YouTube video about this, for the post-human, next-gen, bring me the horizon sound, you want the drums to sound really robotic. And besides, if we're talking about bring me the horizon, they've had this robotic sound for years. Like, listen to Pray for Plagues 17 years ago. So don't sweat it if it doesn't sound too realistic. As for the drum beat, put the snare on the three. Crashes on the half note. And for the kicks, you can put them in a dubstep-like pattern to start like this. And then just add more. Not as many as Pray for Plagues. But something like this. And don't forget the chuggy little guys at the end as a treat. And eventually you'll want to extend it out into longer bars. So for an eight bar loop, you'd have something that looks like this, adding slight variations to where you do the chugs. And generally on the second repeat of the drum beat, at the very end, it's nice to have fills like this to give you a turnaround into the next section. For every live genre, you'd want to humanize these as much as possible and make them sound real. But for this, no, we go full velocity for maximum punchiness because loud equals good. Rawr! You do it all right, it'll sound like. For the lead guitar riff, you want to do a palm muted alternate picking pattern. So if you were to play the riff, you would alternate between the very top string and higher strings to give that sort of octave jump sound. That sounds very kill switch engage like. And I don't have an electric guitar to show you, but I do have a MIDI VST. For this one, I use electric mint. I have a custom sound preset, which I dialed in with this amp. I started with a with one of these ones. I think it was dry metal, and then I tweaked it from there. Now, the alternate picking looks like this in a MIDI. So you'll see that this represents the top string or like, yeah, the, the low. Is the top string the low string or is the bottom string the high string? I never figured out which was the right thing, but this is the top string, the heaviest string. And notice how it's alternating. Sometimes playing like two notes before alternating back, but it's doing a back and forth. And usually we lock it on eighth notes. Like notice how many times we're going back to that F. And then this little uh, fast part here matches up with the kick drum. And at first glance, it seemed easier to write because you have the flexibility of MIDI. But to get the realistic sound, if I scroll down here, I have to map in all the articulation manually, as well as move some of the notes off grid to humanize it a bit more. And the articulation switch you can see is uh, set by the C note. It lets me palm mute certain hits of the F note. So if you listen closely, you can see it switching. And that's how you would actually play it. It sounds fine here, but personally, I think it would still sound better on an actual guitar, but we're working with what I got. And if you're about to write a comment about how these types of plugins are what's making music bad nowadays, all it's doing is making music more accessible. Like if you happen to get called on from your favorite game dev to make a song for their new game and you're on tour without access to a full studio, it's much easier to formulate a listenable idea to the point where you can write at least 80% of the song. Hmm, sounds like a true story. We've been given about five days to write a song. 
for um, the new game Death Stranding. We started writing about two days ago. We're on tour at the moment. Plus, at the end of the day, you can always re-record this with real instruments once it's written. Okay, but listening to this guitar... <laughs> It needs a bit more beef, so duplicate the lead onto another guitar. I like to turn on scale, select all of the notes that you wrote, not the articulation. Go up two notes, hold shift, and bring it down an octave. Go into the guitar, tweak the amp settings a little bit for some variation, and bam! That's a harmony layer. And altogether, that sounds like... Now what really sets the mood of this song and gives it a more pop punk feel is the chord progression. With guitar you want to just stick to power chords, so you just go with the uh, root note, the fifth, and then the root note again, and that sounds like this. And this is the progression I used. F, G, A. But if you notice, I've also put in some passing chords to just add a bit more movement and interest to the progression. On top of that, Electric Mint has a great preset that samples strumming eighth notes so that you avoid that Super Nintendo electric guitar rhythm sound. But you know, you can always do that if that's the vibe you're going for. And if you were to record this on an actual guitar, you'd do two different takes, pan one to the left, pan one to the right, and then that would make your full rhythm guitar section. But with Electric Mint, you can just click this doubling button and it emulates that. And that sounds like... Another little trick I've done here is I've automated a silence button because sometimes the automated eighth note playing drags out a little too long and I want it to pause at specific moments and I just have a silence automation. You can see it's there so it doesn't bleed out. Now we need to beef up this layer even more. And so we do that with octaves. If you'll notice here, the octaves share the same progression. And that just means I'm playing the root note a few octaves higher, but without the transitionary notes. Because the contrast between this higher note and the rhythm guitar is enough. Plus, if you want to get all producer brain, this layer will help fill out those higher frequencies and lead to a fuller guitar sound. And together with the drums, that sounds like... But Ash, you say, this sounds a bit thin still. That's right, for the lower mid-range we use Poop saw. Just kidding. I actually use my pop punk bass rack. Woo! And you can have this one for free because I don't need money, right? <laughs> Who cares? Free downloads! Woo! Wait, what do you. What do you mean I need to buy you cat food? All right, well, I guess it's time to talk about this video sponsor. Give that song you've been working on the release it deserves. That's right, with this video sponsor, DistroKid, it's easy to upload all your music to streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music, Tidal, and more. But hang on, that's a lot of different streaming services. And with a lot more people swapping from service to service, how on earth are you supposed to keep up with where to upload? And all those links, what do you do with that? Not with Hyperfollow, included with your DistroKid subscription. Hmm, what's Hyperfollow? Glad you asked. It's one page that has all the links to all the different places your song is uploaded. So as soon as you upload your music, you can start promoting it with pre-saves through that same link. Then once it's actually live, it'll automatically swap over to an all-in-one page to find your song. Once you sign up for DistroKid, you can find your hyperfollow link under goodies and promote yourself. All this for only $23 a year, and because you're watching this video, you can get 7% off your first year by using my VIP link. Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to grab the free download while you're down there. Anyway, grab the free download, but also it is free because it uses a bunch of these awesome free plugins that I'll include in the download. Neat. So as for the bass, to add that lower end beef to the entire song, it basically follows the root note of the guitar progression. I also added in a few octave jumps 
and some fifths right before changing to the next note so that the bass player doesn't get bored while playing it. And if you listen to it, It does sound a bit robotic, but that's fine because it'll mesh well with the drums. When you're adding a bass guitar part, you want it to be as tight with the drums as possible. So if the drums are more loose, you want the bass to play looser. But if the drums are super robotic and tight like we have it, it's better to have a robotic bass like this. So this sound just adds to it. And obviously, if you're doing a non Bring Me the Horizon type song, it's better to play the bass in person again so it sounds more human. But that's not what we're going for here, all right? And so with the drums, that sounds like Now this is good, but let's modernize it, spice it up and give it that real post-human next gen sound. Out of the way, emo kid, this is where I shine. <laughs> My knowledge as an electronic music producer finally comes to fruition, okay? To get started, we use the glue compressor using spectral compression to synthesize an active limiter while we adjust the threshold for maximum clipping and intermodule distortion for a bright and clean mix. Bro, all I did was drag in the almond break have an EQ catch just the hi-hats so that we can bring in a lot more movement. But I wanna sound smart. I make electronic music. <laughs> Did I impress you with my knowledge? No. Duplicate the almond break. The one with a low pass for that muffled drum sound that every 2009 metalcore band put on their electronic drums. Blend that together and then you have a modern version of that intro drum loop. Also chopping up the drums into little glitch fills like that really helps too. For the intro as well, we're copying over that guitar riff and putting it onto a synth. This is essentially just a super saw. I'm using Ableton's wavetable and I'm turning up the warp a little to change the wavetable so it's a little bit more of a squeezed saw. It's also a little bit in between a saw and a square wave and the important stuff all happens on this side here. I've turned it on to noise mode for the unison with five voices and only a little bit of amount that'll sound like this. And you can actually, you could actually use that too. That sounds kind of neat for, <laughs> for this sound. But I chose to go with the more super saw, unison, detuned variant because it blends really well with the electric guitar you'll hear later. And then the very, very important part here is to make sure to switch it to mono. And then turning glide on. This around 77 milliseconds works really well with the 190 BPM, but this is just kind of like you turn it up until it sounds good. So without it, it sounds like this. And as you turn it up. And obviously if you turn it up too high, it sounds a little too wonky, but I found that around 77 milliseconds sounds great. And then once you do layer it in with the guitar, I've duplicated it again. I've switched it to pure square wave, still kept the same glide and mono, turned up the unison a lot so you get this really noisy variant. Octave also goes up by one and a little EQ. So that you just uh, fill out all of those extra high frequencies and this blends really well with the electric guitar. <laughs> It's subtle, but it works. The last electronic element I'm bringing in is a variation of the chord progression. And I just use a stock serum preset because that's what all the bands in 2009 did anyway. Sound design, what's that? But if you wanna make this effect, you can map LFO one to all of the volume knobs that are on the synth, put it into this pattern, change it to half beat rate, and there you go. And finally, some last touches to modernize it. Make sure you sample the most egregious money-grabbing mobile game for some dopamine-inducing bleeps, because that's what makes money nowadays, right? All together. If you skip to this part to listen to the final result, too bad. I'm actually restarting the video from the beginning. So first, set the BPM to 1.9. I'm just kidding. But if you did skip to here, you have to like the video. For everyone else, here it is.